Hello friends, this video on statistics part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 4. The second method which we have is assume mean method. Assume mean method and this method is also used to find the mean of group data. The first question is, will it give a different answer if I use direct mean and assume mean to find mean? No. You use any method, you use direct mean method, assume direct method or assume mean method, you will get the same value of mean. The second question that comes to our mind is, when we have direct mean method and that is very simple, why do we need assume mean method? The answer is, sometimes in real life what happens is the data is huge. The data is huge and it's difficult to handle, it's difficult to calculate because you have millions of data. It's difficult to calculate because if you, if you if you have x size, if you keep on adding it, the, the number is very huge. And that's what we do is, we use assume mean method. This method helps to find the mean little easily. The calculation is little less cumbersome. And then you how? what we have to do in this case. In this case also, the first thing you have to do is you have to find x size. And x size is nothing but, you have to get the lower interval and the higher interval of the class, divide by 2. So once you have the x size, what you can do is, you can assume one mean. You can assume that, but just going by looking at this uh, figure itself, you can assume that this guy is my mean, the middle value, which you feel is the mean. It may, it should not be the exact mean, just you assume that mean. Then what you do? From x i, you subtract that value, you get d i's. And instead of f i, x i, you now find f i d i. I'll explain more. First let me find and then use the formula. Summation is nothing but a plus summation fi dA by fi. I'll show you how it is simpler. So if you see this is exactly the same example which we had last example but now I'll show you it is little better. So xi we have found in the last example also now so I can find 10 plus 25, 35 by 2 is again 17.5. This is 25 plus 40, 65 by 2 that is again 32.5. 40 plus 55, 95 by 2, that has become 47.5, correct? 70 plus 55, 125 by 2, that is 62.5. 70 plus 85, 155 by 2, that is 77.5. And 80 plus 100, 185 divided by 2, that is 92.5. So you have all the values of xi. So if you see earlier, we have multiplied these two and we got a very big figure in FIXI, correct? All the figures were big. This was 550, this was some 400 odds, this was 300, if you multiply these two figures. So now what we are doing is assuming one mean. So we assume that this C to me, I feel this is the mean. My gut feeling, maybe correct, maybe in gut, I don't know. Just assume mean, I can just assume because it starts from 17.5 the and the maximum value is 92.5 and somehow I feel this is the middle value. Just my gut feeling, I can take this value also, it will come the same answer. Now I have to find di. di is nothing but xi minus d. That is 17.5 in this case minus d, that is 47.5. So this value comes out to be minus 30. Similarly here again, 17, uh, 32.5 minus value of d, that is 47.5. This value comes out to be minus. 50 and this is 47.5 minus 47.5 that is 0. Here it is 62.5 minus 47.5. So this guy came out with 15. This guy is 77.5 minus 47.5 and this guy came to be 30 and this guy is 92.5 minus 47.5. And this guy came out to be 45. I got the value of di's. Now I have to find fi di. That is, I have to take these values and I have to multiply with this value. So minus 30 into 2 is how much? Minus 60. Minus 15 into 3, minus 45. 7 into 0, 0. 15 into 6 is 90. 30 into 6 is 180. And 45 into 6 is again 27. So if you see these values are not that big actually. 
zero, minus sixty, ninety, one eighty. Not that big. Earlier it was five fifty, four thirty, three seventy. All big big values. Now the value is less. And now if you want to find the FIDI same machine also, if you add these values, you get four thirty five. This value also is not that big. Earlier it was a big value actually. It was more than thousand. Now the value is less. And here's here also the summation is thirty only. The number of students if you add the different thirty only. So what advantage we got here? If you see, the calculation is little simple. The multiplication earlier we multiplied these values that ninety two point five into six, seventy seven point five into six. Now we are multiplying thirty into six, zero into seven, minus eight into three. These values are less. Sigma F I D A also came out to be less. So the calculation part, if you see, I need to handle smaller data. I'm not handling big big data. I'm handling smaller data. Now I'm using the formula. A plus F I D I by F I. So here, what is the value of A? Assume mean was forty seven point five. That is forty seven point five plus sigma F I D I is four thirty five. By sigma F I is thirty. Correct. If you solve this, this becomes forty seven point five plus four thirty five by thirty is fourteen point five, and this comes out to be sixty two. So if you see an earlier process also, an earlier method also, the value we got was 62. That is 62 was the mean for this data, and now also what we are getting is 62. But the only advantage is with this, my data is little easier to maintain. Correct. So this is one advantage of assume min method, where it is easier to maintain the data. If you have huge data, it makes sense to use assume min. If you have very small data, it doesn't make sense to use assume min because in that case, with direct method also, you can get the answer very easily. But in case the data is very huge, you have millions and billions of data. You can use as you. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.